Hello everyone and good morning. As you can see, we are now in our main hall here at V-Mall in Green Hills. And this is one of the things that we've been praying for na at least get some kind of normalcy in, in, uh, in how we do things and in our everyday. So we tried this week and experimented to go back here in the main hall and to preach to a deserted crowd, no? to, to a place where there's nobody listening to us. But then I do trust and hope that this preaching that we'll have this morning would come and do its work in your heart and that the Spirit of God will speak to you. And we are on our two-week series on jumping off from our week of Pentecost where we're talking about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit can do in your life and in our lives today as we move on now from a very enhanced community quarantine to a more general modified one where there's a little more leniency but then still all the rules and the new normal that we are all experiencing today. And I want us to look at, if you have your Bibles with you, turn it to Acts chapter 3. And before we go to Acts 3, I'll just go to the last verse of Acts chapter 2, where it says, And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. The church was growing. The church was explosive. This is like kind of like how the church was prior to our COVID days. We were thinking about expansion, doing more work, more buildings, more, uh, more youth services that we're going to do all across our city. Signs and wonders were happening. Right? Then we go to Acts 3. And here there's a story of a man. And, and from a macro view of what the church was, the, the writer of the book of Acts now tells us of a story of, of a beggar. And if you open your, your Bibles to Acts 3, verse 1 to 10, we're going to look at it. I want you to go with me with this story. It says there, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. No? So, uso na rin dati, no? yung 3 o'clock prayer habit. No? Ewan ko nung bata ka kung nanonood ka pa sa PTV4 at saka RPN9. Sabay yan, the 3 o'clock uh, prayer. No? And, and at the time, it was at 3 o'clock where people would go to the synagogue to pray, to the temple to pray. And as they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day, he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate. So he could beg from the people going into the temple. So what was happening? Just like today, the church or the temple was a good place where you can beg. Why? Because people would go to church, worship God, have a softer heart and give to the poor. And so it was their uh, strategy to put beggars who cannot work, who rely on other people, so that they would now put beggars on the temple doors so that they could ask for money. And they place him in the most strategic place which is called the beautiful gate. You know why? Feeling ko kasi maganda yung gate. <laughs> it's a beautiful gate. It was, it was where the, maybe the rich and the, those who want to feel beautiful or who feel like they're rich would enter into. There were nine gates throughout the temple, but this one was the beautiful gate. There could have been a narrow gate. There could be a bronze gate. This was beautiful gate. Kung isa kang beggar na marunong mag-isip, Dito ka pwesto. You'll position yourself in the most beautiful place in the temple to get the money that you need. When Peter and John was about to enter, he asked them for some money. He saw Peter and John and the beggar says, uh, Please, give me money. Palimos. Verse 4, Peter and John looked at him intently and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expressed expecting some money. Now, let's dissect this. And I believe God wants to speak to us through this encounter in verse 3 and 4. So, the beggar looks at Peter and John and he asks them for money. You see, in times of crisis, in times when you don't know what to do, when your hands are tied and there's nothing I can do, there is a tendency for us to say that money is the solution to the problem. Right? Ilang po sa atin dito nag-worry, you have sleepless nights because of money. Because you don't know, business is not doing well now. Money. I don't know where to get uh, food for next week. Money. What if I get laid off? Money. Many of the things that we worry about, we think there's a tendency for us as human beings to say 
that money is the ultimate solution to the crisis, to the problem that we are all facing. So I want you to look at this verse. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for what? Some money. Right? Pahingi ng pera. Pahingi ng ayuda. So pa enter na tayo ng second wave of ayuda. Ano po nangyari ng first wave? Diba? Millions and millions of pesos were given to our people. Now we're entering second wave. Bakit? Dahil nagugutom ulit tayo. Tama? We all need food. And so no amount of money, aid, could sustain the prolonged crisis that was happening in the life of this beggar. He looked at the disciples and he said, the only solution to my problem is money. If you could give me money, I will survive another day. Peter and John, verse 4, looked at him intently. Right? Now, I pause here and I will look at you intently. Look, kung gusto mong lapitan para mas kita, mata ko. Kasi singkit, mata ko. I will look at you intently. It's like, intently. Intently means fixated, fully focused, fully occupied with or taken by, fixated. There's that intent look to observe with great interest by a fashion, fixed gaze. This was the true meaning of the word uh, intent. Peter looked at the beggar intently. What was happening here? Though there was no mention of the Holy Spirit, of all the people, of all the beggars in the beautiful gate, this was going to be the day where the Lord speaks to Peter and John and, and, and puts something in their heart and tells them, you've got to do something about this beggar. This is the day that the Lord has made for this beggar. You're going to encounter this beggar. Many would have asked Peter and John, give us money, give us food, give us money, give us food. But of all the beggars in the beautiful gate, the intent, Peter, and the disciples were fixated upon this beggar. Something was about to happen. When you're fixated, the question is, saan ka fixated? Where are you fixated from? Right? It could be worry, it could be emotions, it could be problems. I'm focused on the problem. Therefore, I cannot see the solution. But the Lord was teaching us something here and He was teaching the beggar and the disciples something here. You see, when we're intent, when there's an intent over something that the Spirit gives us, it can actually change the direction of our life. I'll give you an example in my own life. This is a picture of Bishop Ferdy and me. This was taken, I think, uh, five, six years ago. But this was taken uh, 16, 17 years ago. Pag makita niyo yung picture, halatang halatang matagal na to. Right? But I remember, of all the preachings I've heard in my life as a Christian student, it was the preaching of this man who was a youth pastor that I was fixated upon. Of all the hundreds of preachings I've heard and required to sit down to listen to, there was this preaching that changed the direction of my life where the stirring of the Holy Spirit, sobrang lakas. Sabi ko, after nung preaching na yun, magiging ganyan ako. I'll be like that person. Hindi po ako tatakbo across the Philippines. No? No? Pero sabi ko, that is the calling. That is the job I want to have. I want to be a preacher of the word. Something happened that day. The Spirit did something in my heart. I don't know if Bishop Ferdy looked at me intently during the preaching, but even if he did not, the Spirit of God did something to me. That changed the direction of my life. Nothing is an accident with the Lord. Another picture, this is a picture of me pursuing my wife. Of all the women in the world, Alam ko marami magagandang babae dyan. Yung asawa ni Lou na nag-shoot nito, si Sarah, napakaganda. Si Kat, napakaganda. Si, si Yet na nandito, nag-iisang audience ko. Right? Lahat magaganda. But why 
in the world would I marry this girl? Because there was an intent. I was fully fixated upon the beauty of this woman. And this changed my life. The Spirit spoke to me. That's gonna be your wife. Of all the women in the world, that's gonna be your wife. The Spirit was moving. Walang aksidente sa buhay. The encounter of the disciples with the beggar that day, it was not an accident. God was about to do something. The Spirit was speaking. We have to be very sensitive. In my life today, so many friends that I have, I don't know how, but these are friends that God has placed in my life. That there was a realigning of God's, I don't know, ways and plans for me to have solid covenant friendship where I can now look at this picture and say, it is really God. The question would be, is where do we fix our eyes? Yung intent natin. Isipin mo pag hindi narinig ni Peter, yung Holy Spirit that day. That beggar won't even be in the scripture. But that encounter changed the life of that beggar. And Peter said, the beggar said, give me money, I, I need money. It's crisis, second wave. Mukha kang mayor, pahin ang pera. Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. What was, what was happening? Peter said, you're asking money from me? Look at me. Look at us. We're like you. We don't have money also. Right? Yung iba kasi mukhang mayaman lang, no? pero wala rin talagang pera. Magaling lang pumorma. Sabi, sabi ni Peter, look at us. You're, you asking me now? Right? And many of us, this is what we do. At times when we don't know what to do, where do we run? We run to the same human beings who don't have the solution. Right? We fix our eyes on who? The people we think who could help us, but really are experiencing the same problems, the same anxiety, the same depression, the same financial crisis. And so we look at human beings and we see there's no solution to this. And Peter said, why look at us? You look at us. Siguro ko ako yung... Hihingi ka talaga ng pera sa akin. Anong bibigay ko sa'yo ngayon? Sardinas, hati tayo. Right? The layman was expecting some money. When Peter said, look at us, what Peter was saying, we're all in the same boat. The crisis is no respecter of people. Hindi yan nire-respeto. Pinoy ka, Chinese ka, Amerikano ka. Walang pinipili. Ang virus, walang pinili. Ang pandemic, walang pinipili. Globally, we all experience this. And so, the word look at us is Peter saying, look at the limitations of a human being. There's nothing I can do that could transform you long term. I could give you a penny today, tomorrow it's gone and you're hungry again. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. Right? Silver and gold, I have none. If I have, I give to you. So what does Peter have? He says in that verse, In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Wow, teka lang. Ano, anong solution mo? Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus? Makakasout ko ba tong gutom ko in the name of Jesus? Right? <laughs> Sino sa inyo gutom na gutom na? Di ba? Tapos, lilihan sa'yo lang ba yung, ano yun? In the name of Jesus. Mawala ka. Ayun. It's not that. Peter was saying a message. And church, I want you to see this. This is my tension. This is our tension. This is your tension. We look at this world thinking that money would solve the problem. Money will help. But money is not the main solution. Peter was saying, you know, I could give you silver and gold, but I have none. But, if I, but something I have, I can give to you. Peter was saying, God is about to do something in our midst today that's going to change you and me. But you've got to learn where to fix your eyes 
He says, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Tayo, lakad, bangon. Right? Get up and walk. Sa Tagalog, tanong, no? Saan tayo nakatingin? Where are you looking at? Where do you fix your eyes? Where's the intent? The, where are you fixated upon? And Peter said, not on money. Silver and gold we do not have. But such as we have, we give thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. I want you to see this. The money is in the beautiful gate, according to the beggar. The money is among the church members. The solution is with the government. Dapat, trabaho yan ni President, o kung sino man, ni Mayor, ng local government, napakainin ako. Kaya nila. Siguro hanggang tatlo, apat na buwan. Pero magugutom tayo ulit. Why? Because the solution is not there. Money I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to pray this over your life today. Money I do not have. I, I'm saying this. Ako to. Okay, this is not Peter anymore. This is also my line. Okay, I'm telling you now. Money I do not have. Okay, sa lahat po ng inaanak ko, money I do not have. Okay, <laughs> sa lahat ng gusto kong humingi ng pera sa akin, money I do not have. But what I have, I give to you. And what do I have? Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up, walk, thrive, survive, use the miracle to live the full life. This is what God's message is for the church today. In the name of Jesus Christ, stop the whining, stop the begging, stop the unhealthy dependency. Go to God, fix your eyes on Jesus, get up, walk, live the miracle that God has for you. Sa daming mensahe na binigay na sa atin, magkakasama na tayo sa Green Hills more than 10 years. Sa daming mensahe, di ba? Dito pa umaaten si Ching Positive. Sa daming mensahe, sa dami ng naturo, sa tingin mo pera mabibigay namin sa inyo? Hindi. Alam niyo yan. But in the name of Jesus Christ, put your faith in Christ. Get up. Stop whining. Get up. Start doing something about the gifts that God has given you. Pera problema mo, sabi sa Bible, Deuteronomy 8.18. But remember the Lord your God. For it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. What does Deuteronomy 8.18 say to us? In the name of Jesus Christ, get up. Get up. One of my favorite movie, Rocky. No, pinanood ko na yan. Pati panganay ko, pinanood ko. History lesson namin sa KPI. No, kasi naka-quarantine. One of my favorite scenes was when uh, the coach of Rocky, no, Rocky was down and he was just shouting, get up! Get up! Get up! Right? And I think we need to have that same fighting spirit as a church. We're here today in V Mall. If you look at this place, it's empty, but we're going to rise up again in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up! Right? Let's do something about our lives. Let us declare 1 John 4, 4, Greater is He who is in me than he who is in the world. Get up. Rise up again. Bangon tayo. Huwag na tayong umiyak ng umiyak na wala tayong ginagawa. Magtulungan tayo. You know, one of the things that's going well for all of us is we have a church community where we can come together and help each other. John 14, 12, Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these he, will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Ano sinasabi nitong verse? Get up in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And then look what happened in the next verse. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, what happened? The man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Right? Ano nangyari? Diba? Lumakas. No? For the first time, nagpipreach ako nakamao nga, hindi na ako nakashorts, guys. Right? Ano sabi doon? Right? The, the, the strength of the feet. 
what was not there before is now existing. How? In the name of Jesus Christ, the words of faith, the words of life brought strength to the feet. And the man started getting up and he got strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk. He was walking now. Excited. Parang, parang today. Excited kami kaya ganito ako mag-preach. Kalabas na ako ng bahay. Right? You're excited. Then walking and leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. And all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When the word of God takes effect in your life, when the feet that was once weak, that was once immobile, starts moving, not because of money, but because of the faith that we have in Christ, the courage that only Christ can give, the power that the Holy Spirit can give, what happens? It starts to be strengthened, walking and leaping and praising God. This should be our life in the times of crisis. Church, we should be walking and leaping and praising God, no matter what happens. Some of us are having the hardest time of our lives. Speak to that feet of yours and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, get up, get out of that bed. Start proclaiming the word of God and walk and leap and praise God. And all the people saw him what? Walking and heard him what? Praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. Why? Because the life of that man will never be the same again. That man will now walk and leap and praise God. Did money help him? No. But now that he can walk, do you think he can have a business now? Yes. With a newfound faith, do you think he would have a sounder mind now? Yes. Now that he understands that there is a God who is a miracle worker, do you think makakabangon tong tao na to? Of course. Bakit? Tama na yung perspective niya sa buhay. What he needed were those short, simple sentences in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Let the world see that we are overcomers, fighters. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Ako bilang isang tatay, kinausap ko ng mga anak ko, asawa ko. Sabi ko, hindi ko alam tong krisis na to. What will happen? I don't know what will happen to our members. But here is what I say to you, to my family. Daddy will remain strong. Daddy will fight. Daddy will make sure that you guys will be working doubly hard also, not just me. We're going to fight together to survive this crisis. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. I want to end with this, Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a so great cloud of overcomers, of witnesses like Moses and Joseph and David who killed Goliath, and the twelve disciples who are all in heaven, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us what run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us fix, intently fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand, of the throne of God. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. We've got to hear the voice of the Lord today. He's the author of our life. He's the perfecter of my faith. He endured the pain, went through a lot, went through a crisis moment in his life, but came out victorious. This is the God to whom we fix our eyes on. So as we end, I want us to pray. I want this to be a message if you need to repeat this message in the darkest moments of your life, play this. Download this in YouTube, right? Make sure to listen to this message and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to rise up and I'm going to walk. Let's bow down our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you, Lord, this afternoon, and we are declaring a resurrection of hope, a resurrection of our dreams, a resurrection of that overcoming spirit 
that was planted in us when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Lord, we always say it's never an accident that we are members of victory. Lord, we are part of a church named Victory because the victory is already found at the cross. You died for our sin. You overcame sin and death. Therefore, your followers have all the reasons not to quit. There's no crisis that we cannot overcome if we fight together and if we do it with you. So Lord, I pray for every dejected, every sad, every lonely, every negative thinker that might be listening to this. Lord, I speak the words of life over them. Silver and gold I have none, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up, stand up, walk again, fight the good fight of faith. Lord, may we not quit. Lord, may we persevere. May we endure the pain. Just like how you endured the pain of the cross. Give us an overcomer spirit. Lord, today, may we fight this battle with you. For the battle belongs to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen, Amen. All right, thank you so much. Lou, baka pwede natin ipan lang para makita nila yung ating uh, center. Guys, this is a picture of what is about to come. We're preparing for something big. And I know there's no people now except, yeah, Larry, of course, everywhere. And yet, and some of the guys here. But then, we want you to know, victory is coming. Not, not the center, okay? Victory in Christ is coming. We're overcomers, guys. Let's do this together. In Jesus' name, amen.